Today we're going to look at a family of integrals parameterized by two numbers. We're going to determine the values of those parameters that make these integrals converge. And then if we have convergence, we'll calculate the value as well. So the integrals in question here are of the form, the integral from zero to infinity of x to the a minus one over one plus x to the b dx. So the first thing that we're gonna do is notice that if a is negative, we do not get convergence. So let's maybe work through that a little bit. So for that bit, we actually don't need this entire integral right here. We only need the integral from zero to one, but our goal integral is definitely larger than the corresponding integral from zero to one. So I'll put an inequality here. So this is bigger than the integral from zero to one of um, x to the a minus one over one plus x to the b dx. But now what I'll do is just take this denominator and I'll replace it with two copies of one. So in other words, instead of one plus x to the b, it'll be one plus one. But that's replacing the denominator with something larger given that x is between zero and one, thus making the whole thing smaller. So that means what we have here is bigger than one half times the integral from zero to one of x to the a minus one dx. But at this stage, we've encountered a fairly standard integral that you would learn about its convergence in calculus two. So I'll just point that out here. So this thing converges if and only if the exponent there is strictly bigger than negative one. So in other words, a to the minus one is strictly bigger than negative one, which means a has to be strictly bigger than zero. So that's our first condition. So this thing will converge when a is bigger than zero, but that doesn't really say anything about the relationship with a and b. So let's maybe look at that. Okay, so we've simplified our problem of convergence to saying that our integral converges if and only if the integral of the same function from one to infinity converges. And that's because we have this condition that we already determined that a has to be bigger than zero. But now we're gonna use the limit comparison test between this function and the corresponding function without the one there. So the limit comparison test is usually taught for series, but it also works for integrals. So like I said, we're going to use the limit comparison test with the function which is x to the a minus one over x to the b. So that means we need to look at the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the a minus one over x to the b over x to the a minus one over one plus x to the b. But that pretty quickly simplifies to the limit as x goes to infinity of one plus x to the b over x to the b. You know, just by simple arithmetic. But now let's note that that turns into the limit as x goes to infinity of the number one plus one over x to the b. But now let's notice that we most definitely need b to be positive to ensure convergence in the first place. That's because if b is negative here and a is positive, well, this thing has no hope of converging. So I'll let you check that. So since b is positive, we know that that limit is equal to one given that this term trends off towards zero. So what does the limit comparison test say here? Well, that says that our integral converges if and only if the corresponding integral with this function converges. So that's the integral from one to infinity of one over x to the b minus a plus one dx, where I just kind of put some stuff together there. So in other words, like use some power rules or whatever. And that's, again, by this limit comparison test, gives us this equivalence of convergence. But we have a test for that from Calculus 2. It's called the P-series test. And we know that this thing converges if and only if 
B minus A plus one is strictly bigger than one. In other words, B minus A is strictly bigger than zero, i.e. B is strictly bigger than A. And there we have it. That's gonna finish our classification of the values of A and B that give us convergence. So it's when A is bigger than zero, but less than B. Okay, so now that we have that, let's calculate the value of this integral. Okay, so we've just determined the values of A and B that make for this convergence. And before we get on to calculating the value, I'd like to point out that if A is between zero and B, well, then that means that A over B is gonna be between zero and one, not including zero and not including one but that means that a over b is not an integer. I think that's pretty clear. So let's make sure to keep that in mind. That's gonna be extremely important at the very end. Now let's go on to our integral. And we're gonna start with this denominator, one plus x to the b, and we're gonna write it some sort of crazy way. And how is that? Well, let's write it down and we'll talk through it. So we have the integral from zero to infinity, x to the a minus one, and then another integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus one plus x to the b times y dy and then dx. So let's look at this right here. So bringing this over to the side, we see if we were to take the antiderivative with respect to y, we would get negative one over one plus x to the b e to the minus one plus x to the b times y evaluated from y equals zero to y tending towards infinity. Well, notice as y tends towards infinity, this exponential part is gonna to go to zero. That's because of the values of x that are involved here. That keeps that exponent negative. And then if y is zero, we get e to the zero, which is one, but that's the lower bound, so it's attached to a minus sign, which will cancel that minus sign, giving us exactly what we want. So that's kind of how that works. And now we're gonna start putting this stuff together a little bit. So I'm gonna write this as a double integral now. So we have the integral from zero to infinity, integral zero to infinity. We have x to the a minus one, e to the minus one plus x to the b times y dy dx. And now we're gonna do a change of variables for the x variable, so not the y variable. So we don't need to do some sort of two variable change of variables formula because we can get away with just one given that we're just changing one variable. That really means that the Jacobian matrix would be diagonal. And so again, we don't really need to worry about that fancy stuff. And so what we'll do here is set u equal to x to the b times y. But note that that means that x to the b is equal to u over y, which means x is equal to u over y to the one over b. Okay, but that means that dx is equal to one over b times y times u over y to the one over b minus one du. So we're definitely gonna need that for our like dx component, uh, changing this integral right here. So that's kind of fancy, but that's you know what we need for this kind of calculation. And then also x to the a minus one can be easily calculated here as well. Okay, so let's put all of that stuff in here. So the bounds of integration here don't change. So it's still zero to infinity, zero to infinity. And then we'll have x to the a minus one, which now is u over y to the a minus one over b. And then we have e to the, let's see, minus y. I'm gonna bring that out. So that's from this minus one times y. And then an e to the minus x to the b times y, but that's gonna be e to the minus u. So an e to the minus u. So just to like be careful here, this thing that I'm underlining in green is turning into this product of these two exponential functions. Okay, and then we've got a dy term and then a dx term. Let's write the functions from the dx term though. So we've got one over b times y, so one over by, and then u over y to the one over b minus one, and then dy du. 
Okay, nice. So now let's see if we can start putting this stuff together. So I can bring a one over B out front, and then I've got my two integrals, both zero to infinity, zero to infinity. And then if we take this A minus one over B and write it as A minus B minus one over B, we'll see that it nicely combines with this exponent right here. And that's gonna leave us with a one over Y from this, and then a U over Y to the power, let's see, it'll be A over B minus one, because those one over Bs cancel. And then after that, we have e to the minus y, e to the minus u, dy, du. Okay, great. Now let's bring that to the top and we'll keep going. Okay, so this is where we were. And if we look at this closely, we'll notice that we have a function of u times a function of y. But then since our bounds of integration are kind of independent of variables, I guess our inner bound of integration is the only one that could depend on um, u, well that means that we can split our integral because it's of this form into the product of two integrals. One y integral and one u integral. So let's do that. So we have this one over b, and then we have the integral from zero to infinity. Maybe we'll do the u integral first. So we have u to the a over b minus one e to the minus u du. Because here's the only power of u that's occurring. Then let's see our y integral. So it's zero to infinity, and then we have y to the one minus a over b, just because y is in the denominator there, but then we've got another y in the denominator. So that's gonna turn into y to the minus a over b, and then e to the minus y dy. But now if we look at this first one, we'll notice that it is the gamma function, in fact, this is the gamma function evaluated at a over b, just by the definition of the gamma function. But that maybe motivates us to think about the second one also as the gamma function. And this is in fact the gamma function evaluated at one minus a over b. Okay, so there we've got a value, but we can actually do better than this. And that's because there's something called the gamma reflection formula, which I've proven on the channel before, and that says that as long as a over b is not an integer, this thing is equal to the following. So we have pi over b. So the pi comes from the reflection formula, the b comes from this right here. And then sine of a times pi over b. And I should say that this equality right here, like I said before, only holds when a over b is not an integer. But we know that it's not an integer because of this over here. You know, we argued that a little bit earlier. So there we have it. I think if we follow from the extreme left to right hand side, we'll see that we've got this nice closed formula for this fairly general family of integrals. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.